Michael Hingson was the regional sales manager and head of operations for a Fortune 500 company. He also happens to be blind. On the morning of 9-11, Michael was working in the North Tower of the World Trade Center. On September 11, 2001, Michael Hinkson and his guide dog, Roselle, were on the 78th floor of Tower 1 when the first plane crashed into the World Trade Center. Through smoke and confusion, Roselle led Michael down more than 1,400 stairs to safety before the building collapsed. Michael is grateful to be alive and has shared his story on shows like CNN's Larry King Live with Roselle by his side. Roselle passed away on June 26, 2011. She was 13. For her service on September 11th, Roselle was honored as a canine hero and is a finalist in the American Humane Association Hero Dog Award for 2011. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Michael Hinkson and his new guide dog, Africa. Michael, it's great to have you with us. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. The book was so fascinating because to read from your perspective what it was like going down 1,400 stairs, that would have been an amazing feat, it was an amazing feat for all the other people who were there, but you did that with the guide dog. What was that like? Well, as we describe in Thunderdog, it was, uh, I think, probably in some ways the same for us as anyone. It was a matter of focusing and not allowing panic. Mm -hmm. um, I was led to focus on Roselle. We've always worked as a team. Every guide dog and guide dog user learns to, to work as a team. But as we were walking down the stairs, I suddenly began thinking or realizing and being nudged to think, Focus on her, encourage her, because that's the only way you're going to keep her from panicking, because she's going to sense the fear. And I know that was God talking to me uh, and, and making me think about it in a way that I hadn't verbalized before, that it really is a team effort. And it obviously worked because, I mean, there was, there was a lot going on around you. There were moments where people started to panic, and there was this tremendous smell of jet fuel, and yet she never panicked. She didn't panic because I didn't, and I didn't because she didn't. And it really is an interdependent relationship. She focused on listening to me, and as I sounded calm for her mm -hmm. and said, good girl, keep going forward, left, uh, and so on, she was able to do her job. But in turn, because she didn't indicate to me that she felt any fear, mm -hmm. then I knew that we were safe as we went down the stairs. And of course, that was just in the stairwell. You know, people went through such a series of emotions, yourself as well. I think when you first get to the stairwell, you feel like, oh my goodness, we found a way out. We're going to move down. Then as you realize how far it is to get out of there and those smells are becoming stronger and stronger, was there a moment where you really felt, I'm not going to get out of here? No, not going down the stairs because I felt that all we could do was our best. <clears throat> now, mind you, I was listening every second of the way in case that building started to do something different. But going down the stairs, m meeting people, the meeting the firemen coming up the stairs and so on, I never worried about getting out. I didn't have time to worry about that. You just focused on the moment just focused and what on the was moment. required. Did, you, did it ever occur to you? You worked in that building regularly. It was a big, strong building. Did it ever occur to you that that thing could actually fall and just disintegrate? It never occurred to me, but I always thought when I went into the building, what would I do in the case of an emergency? And so as a result, I worked very hard to make sure I knew how to get around yes. in the building and, and knew all that I needed to know. You know, people think blind people can't function and all we do is hold on to the harness if we use a guide dog and we get dragged around. Blindness isn't the handicap. The handicap are, are our attitudes and misconceptions about blindness. Um, you, you all have the, the disability that you're light dependent, you know, and Thomas Edison fixed that by inventing the electric light bulb for you. Yes. But nevertheless, we all have our challenges. For me, I think what was even more significant was after we got down the stairs and we got outside, we were only 100 yards away from Tower 2 when it collapsed. And of course, it's a 400 yard tall building. And I remember when I knew that the building was collapsing, I turned with Roselle and ran. No one was helping anyone. But as we ran, I started to think, God, I can't believe that you got us out of a building just to have it fall on us. And immediately I heard in my head, as, as you heard other people talking about it earlier, but I heard a voice as clearly as you hear me that said, 
don't worry about what you can't control. Focus on running with Roselle and the rest will take care of itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what helped me because then I had that immediate sense of peace and conviction that if we did work together, we would make it out. And in fact, that's what happened. We made it around a corner. We got a building between us. I caught up to a colleague, uh, David Frank, who was in our office that day for some meetings that we were going to be doing. We kept running. We got engulfed in the dust cloud. We went into a subway station to get out of the, the wretched air that we were breathing mm -hmm. in because we were suffocating in it. Uh, and certainly it was all led by that voice that said, don't worry about what you can't control. Yeah. And so we, we survived. And, you know, that's what we talk about in Thunderdog. But, you know, the book is also not just a 9-11 book. <clears throat> it really is a book about life lessons. It's about me growing up. Um, and so I worry also about not only thinking of the day and all the, the ramifications and the potentials for attack, but also beyond 9-11. And so mm -hmm. we're hoping that this is a way that we can inspire people and educate them a little bit about blindness and also their own lives and dealing with change. Absolutely. Dealing with change and dealing with challenge. I, your parents were amazing people. They really stood strong for you because your blindness came because of a premature birth and right. too much oxygen. So you've really never remembered any time in your life where you weren't blind, but they never accepted that you should be treated differently. And they did everything in their power to change that. And it's, it has made every difference in your life, hasn't it? It certainly has. And, and also my father had a very deep faith that helped me in <clears throat> having a good grounding in, in God and Jesus and, um, and keeping that light that they shine around us fixed in my mind all the time and, mm -hmm. and recognizing that we're all part of the same world. Um, God watches over all of us and God is with us and we need to listen, not just talk to him. Yeah. Well, Michael is right when he says Thunderdog isn't just a story about 9-11. It's a story about life and how to live it and live it well. It's available in bookstores around the country, and I suggest you get it. It's a very inspiring read. Thank you so much for being with thank us, you. Michael. Thank you, and I have a quick present for you. This is Roselle's paw print. Oh, thank you. I love that. We got it just six days before she died. <laughs> That's wonderful. She was an amazing dog. She was.